other things he always asks, he goes, what, he always asks students, what do you want to work on? What skill do you most want to learn at Price Smart Track? And invariably, it comes to that corner. And uh, as you can imagine, because it's easy to go down straight away. It's kind of hard to be so down to the risk or a uh, or, uh, or, uh, product. It's all about that corner. And uh, I remember, and I can't remember which track it was, I had a student come up to me and ask me, hey, I want you to help me on the, on the corner. I said, sure. You know what? Uh, you want to. Uh, uh, corner entry speed, you want to work on trail break, you want to work on high position lean angle, you want to work on your lines, you want to work on your clip point, you want to work on your, uh, you know, your, your drive off the exit, your drive out, you know, uh, down the straightaway. He goes, no, man, I don't want to learn any of this. I just want to learn how to go through the corner faster. I said, no, man, you're not getting it. Because cornering is, is, is a combination. It's a, it's, a, it's a master set of all those skills that that I just did, and, uh, and, uh, and, and focusing on your lines and seeing through the corner like Pat was having to do in this last session is one of just many, many aspects of, of corner. Um, what uh, for for students like us, like us that are working on cornering skills, what what do you suppose is the most critical thing to critical skill? To get right, to work on, to to be able to, to work and focus on your cornering skills and track. What what's that? Pick a skill. Okay. Somebody. Smooth and predictable. What's that? Smooth and predictable. And looking ahead or something. What? Looking okay. ahead, looking to the corner. Um, those are all good points. My personal opinion is corner entry speed because because corner entry speed pretty much dictates everything that's going to happen after you enter the corner. It's going to dictate your body position. It's going to dictate um, how well um, you can manage to stay on the lines. It's going to, uh, it's going to manage, uh, it's going to dictate um, whether or not you're going to be trail breaking. It's going to slow down um, during the, the initial part of the quarter to hit the apex. It, it, it pretty much sets the mood or sets the tone of everything that you're going to do in that corner. How, um, how do you uh, how do you set your uh, corner entry speed? Um, how many watch G uh, more than GP? Everybody's seen that. How, how many people have seen uh, like Rossi or or uh, Marquez come into a corner and then look up, check this pedometer? You might see that. <laughs> you, know, you know why that is? We have off one. They don't use their speedometer to set their, their corner entry speed. And for two. If you ever saw a motor GP bike, they don't even have speed on them. So how do they do? How do how do you how do you set your corner entry speed as well as they do? Patrick was talking about being within six inches of uh, you know at every single lap, being extremely, ex extremely consistent. Like they're less than a mile per hour all the time through every single turn on the track. I'd, I'd be hard pressed. I'd, I'd give somebody a hundred dollars if they could do that twice in any turn on this track. Because because you can't. I mean, I'm not I'm not bagging on you guys, but you guys aren't that good. Oh. So my point is, if you want to work on your, on your corner, and this is what I told that student, I said the first thing you got to do, you got to get you got to get a reference point. You got to get some kind of benchmark, frame of reference from which you can start working on that corner. Let's take um, let's take a little bend. You know, you got a fairly fast straightaway. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a right hander. Uh, at some point, when you come down that, that straightaway towards the little bend, you're rolling off the throttle. And then at some point, you're using your brakes to slow down. And then at some point, you're letting off your brakes. It may be before you tip into the turn for less experience. It may be it may be halfway to the apex for for people that are that are, that are trail breaking but, uh, uh, or, or proficient in trail breaking. At some point, and even during the day, at some point you have, like I said, you need to build some kind of a, a benchmark from which you can you can vary a little bit by a little bit. And that's how you're gonna that's how you're gonna set your quarter speeds, and that's how you're gonna increase them gradually as your ability as the track comes in, as your tires get hotter, and, and as your as your uh, as your 
propensity to study corners faster will increase it. Um, bottom line is, is that most of the corners that we get to, particularly on, on big tracks, uh, uh, ECR, CODA, setting your setting your corner entry speed is all breaks. And, and, and this one, this track, unfortunately, is a little bit less so. We've got a, you know, you know, we've got a, a little bit of braking. Maybe some people are already taking a downshift here. There's certainly some braking here. There's certainly some braking here. There's, uh, and actually in this corner, we're not using our brakes at all to set the corner entry speed. We're using our throttle because we're coming out of a low, a low speed section in the corner, and we're actually ramping up the, the throttle until we get to the corner speed. We're actually doing this one a little bit backwards. Um, uh, coming into Big Bend, um, a lot of people don't use their brakes. Some people, uh, they, they just they, they take the gear. I usually just take the gear, and what I do is I, uh, I set my front end with my brakes just gently enough to, to feel the, the front end compress a little bit, give me a little bit of extra traction when they, when they come in here. Uh, and then big bend. Now, there's a lighting through here, this would be a good place. Um, here, here, and here would be a, a good place to start figuring out <clears throat> where you're rolling off the throttle, where you're applying your brakes, and, uh, and, uh, and how far you, if you are trail braking, how far you are trail braking mm -hmm. here. And get these Get these speeds going through these corners as consistent as you can. And then, then you can start working on other aspects of, the, of, of, of your corner, increasing the lean angle, bettering your body position, um, um, using the throttle at the apex to get a better drive out of it. You know, I, I'm at a track day, you know, it's a track day, it's a track school. Take advantage of every, every minute that you have on the track. To, to improve your skills and improve your ride. And that means, of course, it means staying focused. It means going out each, each session with an agenda, something that you can focus on and work on, and, 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 and hopefully something that you can improve on. And uh, the, the gist of my braking, my using the brakes and, and, uh, and using your brakes to set the corner entry speeds is, uh, is, is something I want you to do so that you can make that part of your riding as consistent as possible. And, and then use that skill to to make as much of the rest of the the, the track as consistent as possible. And that's that's why we have a, a lot of people that are just seat time in it. Those are the, those are the people that, that run off the track. They're not paying attention, or they don't they don't have uh, brake markers, and they don't have a consistency in their particularly in their cornering. And, and uh, as a result, they come into a corner hot. They stand it up and they run wide or they run off the track. To me, that's a mistake. Dave's like, ah, you can do it once, no problem, you can do it too. No, but to me, when I see a rider run wide <clears throat> or run off the track, it's totally, totally one very important thing, probably two. One, is that they're not focusing. Because if they're focusing and, and, and had a reference point, some point that they, they, they use every time they come in in that corner, they wouldn't go off the track. There's no, there's no reason to. Um, or it, it, uh, it, it tells me that they don't even have a reference point. They're just going in on the seat of the pants, trying to set their, their corner entry speed by their comfort factor. And, and you know that sounds that sounds silly to do it that way, but uh, I guarantee there's a lot of people in that class that are still doing it that way. And you need to itemize, identify the breaking markers. <laughs> and, uh, and standardize your corner entry speeds as much as you can on this track. And that'll allow you to work much more in detail on the little aspects of pointing that'll make you better in the corner. So that was my concluding sentence. But um, and at some point, and I don't know what I don't know what Pat's agenda is later, but uh, I, earlier I mentioned that you know that <clears throat> you're rolling off the throttle and then you're applying your brakes. Here's a uh, at some point, maybe this afternoon, if Patrick doesn't cover it or if he doesn't want to, or somebody's interested in it, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you where you can make up a whole lot of time on this track. And it's basically eliminating your coasting. And a lot of people aren't coasting. They roll off the throttle and then they, you know, slowly hit their brakes. If you watch a CMRA race out here, or if you watch any race on television, they don't do that. Well, they pretty much, um, we were watching that. 
that Boston video in class this morning. It goes from green to red, green to red. You know, there's another one I mean is it, it, it's got a there's a there's a bar chart on there that shows when he's on the gas and when he's on the brake. This when they're at that level, it's one or the other. And the and uh and the problem is you can't start working on that until you identify and you get really good at your brake zone. Because you can't you can't roll off 50 yards later thinking, oh, I'll just use the same brake marker that I had before. Um, you're going 30 miles an hour faster. Right? So, so those are some some things. You know, once we get our, our brake markers and our corner entry speed um, identified and dialed in, we can start showing you some other things that can that can, that can lower your track times and speed up the, the bulk of the rest of the riding on the track. So that's what I want you to work on today. Uh, for this session, I want you to standardize as best you can using your brakes as necessary to uh, your entrance to at least at least here, here, here. And then keep in mind what you're doing here, whether you're dropping the gear, just touching the brakes. This uh, this corner can be kind of scary. And particularly if you if you're racing your buddy down here and, and, and you end up at the where you normally uh, start to slow down and set up for this turn going 10 miles an hour faster than you thought you were going to be going to do So start, start memorizing what processes that you are at those points on the track. What gear you're in, you know, whether you hit the brakes, you tap the brakes, you set the brakes, or you use the brakes uh, you know, forcibly maybe in a couple of these areas. And then uh, and start committing those memory. And, and, and as you as go by and you get faster, you're going to have to adjust that. So that, that's another thing to keep in mind. Because you standardize it in session before lunch. I mean, at 2 o'clock, and you get 10 miles an hour or 20 miles an hour more on the straightaway, your breaking markers are going to change. And then some of the other things that we're going to talk to you about, um, about reducing your coasting time, uh, moving your, <laughs> moving your, your, uh, uh, your, 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 your engine deceleration closer to your breaking marker, that's going to change everything too. But unless you have something to stop with, benchmark, something to work against, something to measure against, that's going to be all part of this information. And remember, like and share this video to show your other fellow riders the track is actually the safest place to be.